Have you ever wanted to slice a bread model in Roblox? Yeah, I know I did. So I wrote a script that can do just that. So if I go in to my Roblox game and I start clicking around on the bread, you can see there's a bunch of little slices of bread that we've created from our loaf. And we can do whatever we want with these slices of bread. And this is not only for the bread, so if I were to click on my table, my table's been sliced in half. And let's say I want to slice this block in half. I can slice it once, slice it a few more times, I can get these little parts smaller and smaller. And I can even do this to a massive glass wall. So let me, you know, get a part there, slice a little edge off there, and here's our little glass piece, we can walk on it. Collisions work fine. So, in this video, we'll go over the scripts, the story, and the struggle that led to the creation of my fully functioning part slicing script that can slice bread, it can slice ice, it can slice glass, it can slice whatever part you want, other than mesh parts. But, let's get started. So it started out by my friend challenging me to make a script that can split apart at wherever your mouse clicks. So I did this in this script right here, and this is how it works. Let's go in. And if I click wherever, you can see one color is where, like one part, and the other color is another part. It's random, so they could be the same color. It just depends. And there's no collisions. This is just a representation, and also it does not work. It does not work for any side of the part. And this is how my script basically works. It's primarily a C-frame exercise where I take a point and convert it to object space from the mouse hit. And I get a chunk. And then I just split it with this function right here. And it only works for one side. And that's about it. But I thought to myself, well... Roblox already has a built-in union function with negating and whatever, so let me just demonstrate. If I make a part, and I, you know, make it like this size, and then I go to model, and then negate, and I can select those parts and union them, there is a little hole where the parts were union. So can I apply the same concept to slicing a part? And this is my first attempt at it. Let me run this. If I were to go up to this small part over here and click it, you can see a slice has gone through the part. Problem is, is this part is still only a single union. So that means each of the sliced parts will go together. So if I go to the server real quick, here we go. And if I were to throw this part around, it doesn't, it stays together. And... I wasn't really satisfied with this. But the script was pretty simple. All I basically did was create a part where my mouse is pointing. And then I negate it. So if I were to, you know, wait a second. Just to show you the whole process. And I go up to this part. I can click it. And you can see the little slice spawns in and then disappears where the part should be cut. And this can work on any size part. You can do it for whatever. You can even do it for the base plate. It looks kind of weird since it, get, since it gets rid of the studs, but, you know, you can do that. So then, after a few long hours of scripting, I managed to get my final product. And this is what the script looks like. It's pretty short. It's like okay. a long time to create because I had to use a lot of C-frame functions and some weird union stuff with uh, subtracting and creating some template parts and whatever so I have a wait statement in there just to show you sort of how it works so if, where I click a part spawns to the left and a part spawns to the right so basically what happens is when I click it spawns a part to the left and then it creates a new union from 
that part negated from the piece of bread and then it does the same thing for the opposite side so this makes two separate unions that are still like the same size put together but they have their own physical properties so if i wait for that to finish and i kind of run over the bread actually let's do it with a table that could be easier so you can see the table split and each part of the table can move independently and their collisions work fine and in reality those parts are very small for the sake of demonstration. The template parts that I use to chop off the ends of each union are massive. I have them at the size of the default base plate. Just so for the big parts, like the glass, it can subtract it properly. And you can see it blink in when I click. And I can, you know, slide these around and whatever. But other than all the unions and this mess over here, the script is pretty simple. I just get the position of the mouse. I check if it actually clicks something. And I just do some C frames and get some sizes. And then I have to destroy all of my template parts and the actual part. Because what's happening behind the scenes is this bread is getting destroyed and replaced by two other unions that have the same size as the bread. Just at different positions totally they're the same thing but they're each individual so they can have their own physical properties and that's basically how it works so another thing to note in this project is my custom mouse script this is a module script that is located in my starter player scripts and it basically replaces the deprecated mouse thing like we're used to be able to do local mouse equals player get mouse because the user input service and the camera have their own specific functions for. So you can see down here, this is the only function I really use, the get unit ray. It just gets the location of the mouse and casts that onto the viewport and it changes it to a ray. And this is a unit ray. And I do all the ray casting on the server just because that's how you're supposed to do it. And that's about it. And I just have the local script that requires it and we send a remote event. So this script is very unstable, to be honest. I did not spend that much time on it. It works sort of well, but for example, if I were to click on my character, it breaks because mesh parts aren't supported. So that is one little issue with it. But other than that, it should work fine on any part. And this is basically a demo because with this sort of idea, making glass shatter would be pretty easy and like you could make it random like random glass shattering i feel like that'd be pretty cool that'd probably be a project i would do in the future and yeah so if you are wondering there will be a project download in the description for this if you want to check it out for yourself feel free to use it wherever you want and that's about it for this video so i hope you enjoyed this is a little bit different style of video than what i usually do with my scripting showcases so make sure to comment your feedback down below and if you have any other suggestions and questions then comment them down below as well and if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe but other than that i hope you guys have a nice day and goodbye